Okay, g'day all and welcome to another shoot. Uh, we're finally going to move on with the old uh, image processing uh, assembly program that I made a while back, Imogen. And we're going to make another plugin. Uh, it's been a long time, but I, I haven't forgotten. I haven't forgotten. So let's move on. What we're going to start doing is what's called a box blur. Speaking of blur, why is this so hardness? Hardness 1, thank you. 1 pixel. Uh, a box blur. Uh, okay, so we're going to make a box blur plugin, and it's going to be a fair bit more complicated than what we've done so far. Uh, but it's going to tie in uh, really well with a few other concepts like um, CLR Windows programming with C++ and just calling assembly routines, you know, native assembly routines from um, CLR, C++. And I'm hoping also that we can look at multi-core programming to speed it up after we've finished uh, a basic implementation. Uh, but today we're mostly going to be looking at um, the C++ side of things because what we're going to do is, um, well, we've got Imogen over here which is displaying an image uh, that we want to box blur and Imogen's going to call the plugin and the plugin's actually just going to be a little function that does nothing more, just fn function, uh, does nothing more than open up the box blur window. So this is going to be our CLR C++ window. And the box blur window is going to look a bit like this. It's going to have an OK button. It's going to have a cancel button. Uh, maybe a label over here. And then it's going to have a track bar running along the uh, running along the form, just like that, with little graticules. My friend told me the little um, notches on a track bar are called graticules. <laughs> Um, okay, just like that, and it's going to have a, a track somewhere in the middle, and why is this so blurry? I mean, I know we're doing a box blur, but this is ridiculous. Get out of here. Oh, it's on stupid tool. I'm a stupid tool. <laughs> okay, moving moving right along. Um, so Imogen's going to call our... A uh, plugin function, just you know, a perfectly normal plugin function like the ones we've been writing. Uh, only this plugin function is going to open up a CLR C++ window, and the C++ window is going to have a trackbar, and the user can shift the trackbar left and right and blur the image. So every time the user shifts the trackbar, um, our window has to call back the um, redraw callback and um, have image and redraw the function with the hopefully blurred image. Uh, and then when the user's happy with the amount of blur that they've put on their image, they can click OK. Or if they want to cancel the whole operation, they can click Cancel. And our uh, box blur window will close. So it's a little bit more complicated than what we've been doing because of this uh, window just here. But it's really important when you're working with um, plugins that you can, at some point, implement a bunch of Windows controls so that the user's got some say in how the uh, plugin is to operate. So this is what I'm going to do to introduce exactly that. Alright, so rewinding, what is a box blur? A uh, box blur is a pretty simple blur uh, technique. It's a type of convolution, but it's really simple, so there's easier ways to do it than implementing what's called a convolution matrix. And we're going to actually do a really simple implementation, which is called the sliding window implementation. Um, what it basically is, is for every pixel in... That's not even remotely straight. Would you just... Hold on a second. Okay. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, not bad. Okay, so for every image in the pixel, um, say this pixel just here in the image, so that's one pixel right there. Uh, for every image, for every pixel in the image, I mean, not for every image in the pixel, um, you average the surrounding pixels. So we might take this one, 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 this one sum up all of the red, green, blue, and alpha values of those. What's that? Nine pixels and then store the result in that central pixel. Then we'd move over to this pixel, the one beside it, and we'd do exactly the same thing. We'd sum up this, 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 those nine pixels, and we'd store the average of that result in that middle pixel. And so on and so on. So we do every single pixel of the image, and what we end up with is this little averaged image. You know, every pixel is an average of its surrounding pixels. So you end up with a blur, basically. Um, but the thing is, if we've got a big image, and we're not just doing a little 3x3 three three box, say we're doing a 4x4 four four box, that's hopeless. 
or a five by five box. Maybe we're doing a hundred by a hundred box. You know, we're really blurring the daylights out of this image. Um, what you can see is that summing up a little box of 100 by 100 pixels is going to take a long time. So there's a trick that we're going to employ, which is um, this moving window trick that I mentioned before, uh, which will speed things up a lot. Uh, but also SSE2, which we'll be um, using, or SSE1, I guess, we'll be using mostly since we're using floats. Uh, SSE1 is going to speed things up a lot as well. And then later on, once we've implemented our basic SSE version of this, and probably a C++ version as well, what I want to do is introduce multi-core and uh, see what happens when we calculate this uh, box blur using a few more cores in our uh, CPU. Anyway, moving right along. So that's the basics of a box blur. We'll go into a lot more detail as we actually program this thing, but that's the basics uh, of a box blur. So, um, whoops. Let's get to let's get to here. Okay, so what I've got, if I just move my pen out of the way, um, I've got another uh, plugin that I made before, just so that I can get the um, boilerplate code and copy that. I don't have to type all this stuff out again, so I'll just copy it from a previous plugin that I've made. Um, so. As per usual, if you're not interested in making uh, image and plugins, then you know you can use this information just for general knowledge. Really, um, what we're doing is a box blur. It's the same whether you're using, um, you know, Imogen or, or any other um, graphics sort of program. Yeah. So I'll be talking specifically about the program I made, but I mean you can use it for whatever you want. Anyway, here's the negative plugin, and over here, oh, I've got to keep using. Uh, over here is my new box blur uh, project. So this is just an empty project. As before, what I might do, the first thing, is change it to 64 bits. Um, what we'll do in this tutorial today, I think, is um, just make a plugin that opens up that uh, window with the um, box blur controls on it. Alrighty, so I'll change it to 64 bits. And I might add a header. I'll call it box blur. Box okay that's good and I'll also add a source file so I'll call this box blur.cpp box blur.cpp and like I said before I'll just copy this from this other plugin here and edit it so I'll copy all that control A and all and come back here and paste it into my header uh, okay so I don't think we need all this um, it's not called negative dot h, it's called box blur dot h, not dot x, dot h. And the namespace I might say is imagen box blur. Now I'll get rid of these two, we don't need those. Um, so first of all I'll just I'll just trim this file down to the things that we actually need in this new plugin. Uh, you know, the things that aren't to do with the um, C++ plugin, so describe box blur. Um, and the function itself is called box blur. I might put that on one line for no reason at all. Okay, and we don't have these other functions. So let's get rid of those. Put that back. Okay, so that's just our basic um, header to our box blur function, just a perfectly regular uh, Imogen uh, plugin header. Um, you'll notice that that's underlined, so that would mean that I've got to project and go to your properties and add the CLR uh, runtime support. So down here in common language runtime support in configuration properties, you want to add CLR, common runtime, yep. Common language runtime support, and we click OK. Okay, so far so good. Oh, this stupid screen recorder is really playing up. Uh, so far so good. So I'll come over here to the CPP file. I'll copy all of that as well. And paste it in my box blur CPP. And we'll make the appropriate changes there. So the first change is going to be, instead of include negative, we want to include box blur. And the namespace is box blur as well. Uh, this function is not called describe negative CPP, it's called describe box blur. Um, okay, and a few of these things. So the name of the function is going to be box blur. Um, and the blurb is um, C 
simple box blur implementation. Implementations. Simple box blur implementation. And the tags can be box and blur. The email's the same. Uh, the description, the change, this will be um, this plugin. I will say maybe blurs an image using a simple box blur implementation. Something like that. And the author is, what's Creel? Copyright 2014, would you believe it? <laughs> Me either. Okay, negative. No, that's not called negative CPP anymore. That's called box blur. And we don't actually want to start that at all. Actually, we don't, do, we don't want to do any of that. So the, um, the main function for the box blur plugin, I'll just leave blank for the time being, but I will delete the rest of this code since that was all to do with the negative function. If I save that and save that, what I might also do is change it to a DLL. Yeah, so we're not making an EXE here, we're making a DLL. Dynamic Link Library. This is going to link dynamically, <laughs> and it's a library. Okay, all of that's pretty good. All of that's pretty good. So what we should have now, I'm not going to test this, but what we should have now is just a, uh, a plugin that does nothing. So if I, if I build that, hopefully it'll work. Yeah, the build succeeded. So we now have a DLL in the... Um, in the uh, debug directory for this box blur thing. But what we want to do is add our um, control box. So I'll go to Add and New Item and I'll come down here to UI and I'll select Windows Form and I might call this Box Blur Form. Alrighty, there it is. And this is where things start to change from what we've done previously. Hold on a second, what's it doing? Okay, it's all good. Um, this is where things start to change. So we're just going to make a basic Windows form. Let's just right click on here and go properties. Uh, a lot of people have their properties docked down in the bottom right. <laughs> I don't know why, I like mine floating. I like my properties floating. Um, okay, so the first property I like to change is the text size. I can't handle reading this um, you know, tiny text. So I like to change it to 8. Uh, it's from 8 to 16, sorry. Um, okay, so we might also say that the form border style is fixed single. Um, what else have we got? A few other things. The background color, yeah, that's all good. Uh, cancel button, control box, cursor. Uh, I think all that's good. Uh, location. Uh, we don't need a maximum size box. I basically, I want this form to stay the same size, whatever I define it as here. I don't want the user to change it. You know, it's going to look weird if they change it. Uh, the minimum size box is gone, so we'll get rid of maximum size, minimum size, the opacity is 100%. Uh, right to left, show icon, show in task bar, we don't really want that either, so click that to false. Startup position is Windows default, that's fine. Uh, the text, I might, say, I might say it's just box blur, I mean the user doesn't have to see box blur form. <laughs> I'm sure they can tell it's a form, they'll know just by looking at it. User, what user? Uh, top most, I might change that to true, but this gets into trouble, this um, top most. Sorry, I keep hitting the, um, <laughs> I keep hitting the microphone. Um, okay, the rest is all good, I think. Yeah, so that's about all of the properties for our form. Now we've got to put some controls on. So, um, yeah, we're going to need a button. So I'll just drag a button over here. And I might call this BTN OK. Uh, I like to put BTN at the start of buttons. There's a million. There's a million different ways to name, you know, controls and variables. I personally like to put the um, type of control, a little abbreviation, at the start of the um, control's name, but it's completely up to you. Uh, all the rest should be good, but I do want to change the text to OK. Which I might make that double. Two capital letters. Okay, so that's my BTN OK. I might just copy that and paste and make a BTN cancel. Change the text and change the name. Just like that. 
and I might just double click on that and say when the user clicks cancel for the time being this will change but this close and save I bet I forget I bet anyway when we go OK I'll do the same thing this close yeah I bet I forget I've defined those and I wonder why it's not redrawing properly or something anyway sometimes it's fun to uh, <laughs> see yourself trapped um, alrighty, so the next thing that we want to do is put a little label and our track bar. So here's my label. Um, I might make this um, maybe blur width. Yeah, blur width. That'll be my label. And a track bar as well. Uh, where are we? Um, track bar. Just line those up a bit nicer. Does that look? Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'll stretch that one out. I might move the OK button up and the cancel button up. Just change the size of my form so it all looks a bit normal. Uh, OK, so this is going to be the track bar. As the user moves this track bar to the right, I'm going to want to blur more and more. And as the user moves it to the left, I'm going to want to blur less and less. To the point where if the track bar is situated right at the very left, then there's no blur at all. Uh, we'll code all that later, but for the time being we better set some minimums and maximums so the minimum value we want to actually be one um, the minimum box that you can blur by is every pixel equaling the average of itself sort of thing um, yeah we don't want every pixel to equal the average of zero pixels if the minimum was zero then that would just black out the image uh, but the maximum I might change to 100 here in a pretty wild display of optimism I think we can do a box blur with 100 uh, pixels. Um, the way that I'm going to actually do this, that's going to actually mean a uh, a box blur of about 201 pixels squared. So it's going to be quite a hefty calculation. We'll see how we go. Uh, but all of the rest should be right. So I might also change the maximum. No, sorry, the um, the amount that a big tick change increases. So here, large change. Yeah. So if the user clicks on this um, track bar sort of away from the um, track itself, away from the little tracker, then um, it's going to get a big change kind of message and it's going to change by, by this amount. And I might make this 10 instead, just so that um, the big change is 10, the small change is 1, and there's 100 uh, little points along the thing. I think it's, I think it's all pretty nice. Uh, anyway, if I just save that, uh, that should be saved as well. So if we come over here to our box blur function in box blur.cpp, I seem to be saying <laughs> box blur more times than most humans ever find a need. Uh, but what we want to do here in box blur is actually uh, create one of those forms and display it as a dialog. I like show dialog. I don't want the user to be you know, playing around with other windows while this box blur window is open, so I'll choose show dialog, but you might find need to, you know, show it as a normal window instead of dialog. Uh, but what we want to do is call the um, constructor for this form. So what is it? It's going to be called box blur. But let's see if we can find it. Um, oh, I don't know where it is. Anyway, the point is that in box blur we're going to have to include uh, box blur form dot h, and we're going to say uh, box blur. Is it not called box blur form? What's the? Oh, the namespace is different. All right, I might make the namespace for the box blur form the same as the rest of the program. So it's image and dot box blur, and that way we should get the. Okay, box blur form, um, I'll just call it frm equals gc new. So you've got to use gc new if you're making um, common language runtime uh, forms and, and objects and things. So gc new um, box blur form. Uh, there we go, just like that. And then frm show dialog. Okay, so that should show our form, but what we might also do is take this small opportunity at the end of the toot to pass a few of these values in. So first of all, de actually, 
DT, width, and height, and the redraw function all have to be passed in. So I might just copy those and uh, go to this um, constructor and paste those in there. And I might also change DT to a float star. And I might call it data as well. Um, okay, so the constructor for box blur form now takes a bunch of arguments, so I might pass them float star and dt. Is that going to work? Unsigned long long float star dt. Now I guess width, height, and redraw function. Okay, so it's the box blur form that's going to call this redraw callback. Yeah, the box blur form is going to do all of the things that we need. And this little plug-in uh, header and CPP file are just going to call up the box blur form. So if we come over here to the box blur form, what we're going to need to do is save those values, the data, the width, the height, and the redraw function, um, somewhere that we can uh, easily get them later on. So redraw function. What is it underlined? Um, a variable with a static storage. Oh. Public ref class. Whoops. Sorry, that has to go in the class. Uh, yeah, that's better. So float star um, original image. Float star original image. Um, what's gonna happen? Well, we might also say um, float star um, maybe front image. Uh, yeah, something like that. Int width and height. Okay, get rid of that. Um, okay, so front image equals data. And this width equals width. This height equals height. And this redraw function equals redraw function. Uh, yeah, I think that'll work out. So we need, when we're blurring, uh, a copy of the original image before it was blurred. And then what we write to this front image, which is what Imogen's going to redraw when we call the redraw function, what we write to that front image is the blurred version of the original image. So one of the things that we have to do is make an exact copy of the original image before it was blurred. And I might do that here. For int i equals 0, while i is less than width times height times I think it's going to be. Yeah, for red, green, blue, alpha, that's the number of uh, floats in the front image um, array. Uh, I plus plus. And I might also say that original image equals new, new float and this size just here. Um, okay, original image, oops, uh, i equals um, front, get out of here, equals, not friend, front, throw me a bone, front image, i. Um, okay, so as soon as this box blur form loads, it's going to make an exact copy of the original image, and it's going to sit there and wait for the user to move that track bar. Um, what we should also do, when the box blur form is closing down, um, we should delete that original image, so I might just do it in here. Uh, original image, something like that, delete original image. Um, do you know what, I might just, I might, I might not do that there, I might actually, um, I might add an event that when the form is closing, um, where is it? Form, form closing. Okay, when the form is closing, uh, I want to 
the late original image. And when the user clicks cancel, um, before we close the form, what we want to do is for int i equals zero, well i is less than width times height times for i plus plus, we want to copy the original image back over the um, front image. So front image i equals original image i. I mean, we could use SSE for all this stuff, but it's not going to make a big difference. And then we would close the form, which is going to lead to there. I think that's right. I think it's right how it is. And in BTN OK, the first thing that we want to do is the exact opposite. We want to make front image equal to... No, we don't. We don't have to do anything. Um, Alright, so if I just build that, let's see what happens. We'll have a bit of a drum roll and see if we can't um, open that up in Imogen. Okay, so here's my... This is this is the folder where it's uh, outputting to. So if I go to X64 and debug and grab box blur and come over to my image and folder and put that in plugins. Uh, let's see if we can run it. So what we should see is um, just the uh, box blur form open up. Look at that. Good stuff. Alrighty, let's, let's see. So plugins and box blur. Ah, there we go. There's our box blur form. Uh, so at the moment, it doesn't do anything at all. I mean, you can shift this slider left and right, won't do anything. Uh, we can click cancel and it'll close, uh, but it doesn't do anything at all. So next time, I think we'll have a look at maybe a C++ implementation and I might go through what I reckon anyway is a really good way to convert uh, C++ to native assembly. Anyway, thanks for listening all. See ya.